Okay, welcome to part two of this video in which we're analyzing the force applied by a hammer to a nail. In part one, we set up the problem and then we looked at the sum of moments about point B, which we've got here, and used that, uh, set the sum of moments equal to zero because we're under a condition of static equilibrium, to discover that FAY is 140.3 pounds. So now we need to figure out what uh, FBY and FBX are. So we'll clear off a bit of workspace to do that. And then we can say we'll, we'll use the fact that the summation of the forces as vectors is equal to zero. So the forces we have we have FH plus FA plus FB is equal to zero. We know that FH, um, I just erased it, but hopefully, if you don't remember what it is, you can always back up the video. Uh, we know that FH is uh, 28.9 pounds i hat plus 8.07 pounds j hat. Okay, so this is FH. FA, we just discovered that FAY is 140.3 pounds, so it's 140.3 pounds uh, with j hat. It has no x component. And then FB, will be, um, so, so this guy here, will be FBX I hat plus FBY J hat. And this is going to be equal to zero. So now we will um, collect the terms that are associated with I hat, this guy and this guy, and we get 28.9 pounds plus FBX is equal to zero, which implies then that FBX is minus 28.9 pounds. And then for um, the vertical component, we'll have uh, this term this term and this term. So we have then 8.07 pounds plus 140.3 pounds plus FBY is equal to zero. And we can solve this then for FBY being equal to 148.3 four pounds, and this should be negative. Okay, so what this tells us is that in actuality this nail is applying a force to the hammer that's going downwards, and it's 148 pounds, or 148.4 pounds, which means that the hammer is applying a force upward of the same magnitude to the nail, and the nail is also applying a force to the left of, let's see, we decided this was uh, 28.9 pounds. Okay, so the magnitude of the force on the nail, um, if we, uh, well, let's write, so we have then that FB is minus 148.4 pounds I hat minus 28.9 pounds J hat, and the magnitude of FB, uh, we'll do it up here. If I look at the magnitude of this vector, it turns out to be 151.2 pounds. So you can see the reason why the hammer works this well to pull out nails is that I start with a force, I apply a force of about 30 pounds, 
and the force that's applied to the nail where I want it to be ripped out is about 151 pounds. Well, so I've got about a five-fold increase in force. Uh, the reason that that happens is what I actually have here is a lever. I apply the force here. I have a fulcrum here, and that fulcrum then translates the motion of the for or the force that I apply up here to down here. Okay, so hopefully that was helpful and made sense. Now, for those of you that really like this sort of analysis, let's look at this case where I've now added the block that um, my woodworking texts say will make the uh, uh, force applied to the nail much larger, which will then allow me to uh, pull the nail even more easily. So again, we'll assume that we have 30 pounds. And the geometry here has changed uh, quite a bit. We'll um, assume again, well, let me label the points again. We will have this again be point C, where the nail and the hammer meet. This will be point B. And uh, this point here, where the hammer touches the block, will be point A. And as we did last time, we'll put together a, a set of axes that goes through point A, so an X and a Y axis, and um, we need to basically just repeat the whole computation, but with different values for R, B, and RC, and that will then give us different values for the things that we need to solve for. So without going through it in much detail, um, let me just start writing down the values of RB and RC, and uh, you can check these at your leisure to make sure that I got this right. Uh, we have an angle of 60 degrees between the vertical and this line out here. So we have then that RC, that is the vector from the origin out to this point, will be um, 1.5 inches j hat, that's basically taking us from here to here, plus, oops, minus 8.5 inches I'm sorry, 8.25 inches, cosine 30 degrees. What I'm actually using here is the fact that if this is 60 degrees, this is 30 degrees. And this gives me then the x component of the vector from here to here, plus 8.25 sine 30 degrees and this is an i hat and this is a j hat which then when i add this all up i get minus 7.14 inches i hat plus 5.625 inches j hat okay rb that is the vector from point B to our origin, is just 0.63 inches i hat. And so we can then uh, get uh, the relative position vectors. Uh, again, our goal here is to get rid of, oh, I even forgot to label our forces. Oh, what a terrible thing to do. We'll have here our force Ay, Again, we'll assume that uh, we have essentially a frictionless surface here so that we only have a vertical force. And then we'll have a force FBX and FBY. And we'll take the sum of the moments about B. So I'll have the summation of the moments about B is equal to zero. Just like we did in the previous example, the only thing that's changed is the numbers here. So to do that, we need to have um, the relative vector 
RBC, which again is RC minus RB. And when you work that out, <coughs> you get minus 6.41 inches I hat plus 5.625 inches J hat. And RBA, that is the vector from B to the origin, will be just negative. Um, actually, this guy up here should be negative because I'm going from the origin to here. This will be negative RB, which is 0.63 inches. Okay. I apologize for this negative sign. That was a stupid mistake, which you'll see that I make a lot of. Okay, so now we have then that the moments are going to be R, B, C cross this uh, force here, which I can call F, H, plus R, B, A cross F, A. FH, this guy here, uh, looks like this. FH is going to be, again, we're assuming we have a right angle here. So it's going to be 30 pounds cosine 60 degrees I hat plus 30 pounds sine 60 degrees J hat, and this turns out to be 15 pounds I hat plus 26 pounds J hat. Okay, so we work this all out, and I'm not going to um, I'm not going to uh, go through this in any detail. It's the same process as we had before. Uh, we end up then with um, uh, this guy here being minus 251.0 inch pounds k hat plus f a times 0.63 inches k hat. And from this we can solve for f a y. Let's see. f a y is equal to um, 398.4 pounds. Okay. And again, I'm actually just going to cut to the chase on the rest of them. We sum uh, all of the vectors. Those vectors sum up to zero. Uh, we sum all the force vectors. Those force vectors sum to zero. And then we solve for FBY and FBX. And we get at the end that F Bx is equal to minus 15 pounds. Fby is equal to 424.4 pounds. The magnitude of Fb is uh, 424.7 pounds. And so what we've got here is we're applying uh, 30 pounds of force here. And the force that's being applied in this direction to pull the nail out is 424.7 pounds. So we've got almost a, for a force that's almost 14 times larger than the nail, or than the uh, force we're applying by the hammer that's being applied to the nail. So that's good news, right? The more force you apply, the easier it is to get the nail out. That's the good news. The bad news is that if you've ever tried this, um, with this block here, you can pull this nail head up, um, if you're lucky, maybe a half an inch before you have to uh, get rid of the block in order to get some leverage. So hopefully the nail gives way um, before you run out of space. Uh, the reason for that is that you're trading moving the handle a long distance and having the claw move a short distance for having a smaller force here and a much larger force here. So that concludes this video. Hopefully you found it useful. Thanks for watching.